before scheduling work orders, you'll need to create bookable resources. Bookable resources represent anything that needs to be scheduled to complete work like people, equipment, and physical spaces. Let's walk through creating and setting up resources for scheduling and field service. After logging into field service, go to the resources section and create a new resource. First thing you'll need to do is select a resource type. This defines what the resource is and how it relates to your organization. Choose user for field technicians and anyone that will use the field service mobile app. Another option is to choose contacts or accounts. This is typically used for subcontractors and adds flexibility for implementing scheduling. Choose facility to create a resource that represents a physical space, such as a building or room. Choose equipment for machines, large tools, and vehicles as just a few examples. Choose crew to create a group of resources, such as three people that work together, or two people plus a vehicle. Choose pool to assemble a large group of similar resources to manage capacity. And lastly, generic type resources can be used as placeholders when staffing projects. In this video, we will show basic configuration for the most common types of resources. Let's start with the user type resource, which is most commonly for field technicians that are part of your organization and who will need access to work orders on the mobile app. Choose user and then select the user record from the drop down. Then assign the time zone the field technician will mostly work in. Keep in mind that the related user record should have an address, which is populated from Microsoft 365 or Office 365 user record. This represents the field technician's home address. In the scheduling section, it should also have a latitude and longitude that corresponds to that address. As we'll see later on, this will serve as the starting and ending location when scheduling the resource to work orders. Next, make sure the user record has the appropriate security. He or she should have the field service resource security role or an equivalent. In addition, he or she should have the field service resource field security profile. Then let's head back to the bookable resource. In the scheduling tab, choose where the field technician should start or end his or her day. Choose resource address to use the personal address we just saw on his or her user record. Choose organizational unit if the field technician will start and end the day at a company location. Location agnostic is for resources who work remotely or where dispatchers do not need to consider their location when scheduling. This doesn't apply to field service field technicians who perform service at customer locations. Leave display on schedule board to yes, so we can add this resource to the schedule board later on. And leave enable for availability search to yes as well, so we can schedule this resource with the schedule assistant. In the field service section, set enable for field service mobile to yes. This is extremely important and is required to use the mobile app. For hourly rate, enter the cost of the field technician to the employer. Then for time off approval, set to yes if the time off needs to be approved by an administrator before it will show as time off on the schedule board. Next, enter the warehouse the field technician will use parts from by default. If drip scheduling is set to yes, this means the field technician will only see more bookings once he or she completes the existing ones. If you have resource scheduling optimization installed, Choose if you want this resource to be eligible for automatic work order schedules. Then save. Then launch the field service mobile app. If the mobile app, user, and bookable resource are all configured correctly, you should be able to log into the field service mobile app as the field technician you just created. From the mobile app, go to settings and enter your Dynamics 365 credentials. This includes the URL of the environment and the username and password of the user record related to your field technician bookable resource. 
then hit the sync icon. Back in Dynamics, let's look at configuring a contact type resource. For these resources, set resource type to contact and choose a contact from the lookup. For scheduling and routing purposes, make sure this contact has an address and a latitude and longitude in the scheduling section. If there is no latitude and longitude, you can select the geocode button to retrieve one after entering an address. Back in the bookable resource record, set start and end location to resource address, which will reference the contact's address. In the field service section, enter more details as needed. Notice there is no option for Field Service Mobile, as only user type resources can access the mobile app. Contact and account resources are purely for scheduling. However, you can still auto schedule to account and contact resources. Enable resource scheduling optimization as needed. Next, let's take a look at facility type resources. As an example, here we have a downtown shop that we need to book appointments for. Enter facility as the type and choose the time zone it resides in. There is no lookup reference. In the scheduling section, choose organizational unit for the starting and ending location. Then select an organizational unit from the lookup to the right. This will define where the facility is located for scheduling purposes. In this example, the Seattle organizational unit has a latitude and longitude in the scheduling section. This is required. A facility resource must be related to an organizational unit with a defined location. You can enable resource scheduling optimization for facility type resources as well, though in our example we will leave it as no for now. Next you can add equipment as resources. This is important to reserve equipment, machines, trucks, and tools for use on a work order. Another example is to be able to mark on the equipment's calendar when it is not available due to internal maintenance. Choose equipment for resource type and assign a name. This is the name that will appear on the schedule board. In the scheduling section, you can set start and end location to location agnostic if you do not want to consider the location of the equipment when scheduling. Lastly, here is an example of a crew. Crews are a group of resources that work together and should be scheduled together for a set time period. First set the resource type to crew and assign a name. For crew strategy, set to cascade and accept cascade completely. In short, this means editing the schedule of a crew member will edit the schedule for all crew members. In the scheduling section, choose where the crew will start and end the day, typically an organizational unit that reflects a company location. However, keep in mind that when scheduling, the individual location of each crew member can be considered. Next, you need to add the crew members. From the crew resource, go to resource children and add new resource children as crew members. In this example, this crew is two people and a truck. Also notice you can have resources be part of a crew for specific date ranges. After creating a resource, you need to add the working hours. This represents the time slots the resource can be scheduled to work orders, cases, opportunities, and other requirements. It is also what will show on the schedule board. From the resource, select Show Work Hours in the ribbon, choose the date range or even all time you want to edit hours for. It is very important to choose a time zone here as it will affect schedule availability. It should match the time zone on the bookable resource record. Then choose the days and working hours along with the option to add a break which could be when the field technician takes lunch. In this example, the field technician will work 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
select OK and save. Do the same for your other resources as well. For our facility resource called the downtown shop, we will set working hours to define the hours of operation. While setting working hours, you have the option to set a capacity. If we set capacity of the downtown shop to five, this means up to five bookings can be scheduled for the same time slot. As an example, imagine if the shop has five rooms that can be scheduled. Rather than create five facility resources, we can create one with a capacity of five. At this point, we have created different types of resources, but there are many ways to distinguish resources from each other. This is done by adding territories, characteristics, and roles to define where they are and what they can do. All of these attributes can be used in the scheduling process. From any resource, go to the related resource territory entity. Here you can add one or more territories that represent the geographic regions the resource can work in. It can be as small as a town or as big as a country, and this is based on your business needs. Simply choose one from the lookup or create a new one. If you want the territory to be a collection of postal codes, go to the territory record and add them. Later on, when you create work orders, you can specify a territory, and this helps match it to resources in that same territory when you schedule. Heading back to the resource, we can add characteristics. Characteristics are anything that distinguishes resources from each other. This can be a skill, certification, specialized knowledge, seniority, language fluency, building access, security clearance, and more. Simply choose the characteristic from the lookup value and add a rating value as optional. Rating value simply quantifies the characteristic where a higher number is more favorable. Next, you can add a resource category. This defines the role or title of the resource. If you want to add more territories, go to Field Service, then Settings, then Territories, and create a new one. To create new characteristics and categories, go to the Resource Scheduling app and then the Settings section. Under Skills, you'll see a list of all characteristics that you can associate to resources. The same is true for roles and categories. Proficiency models is where you'll define rating models. Finally, the last step is to add resources to the schedule board. From the field service or resource scheduling apps, go to the schedule board. In the initial public view, you'll see all resources and you should see the resources you just created. You'll also see the working hours you defined in the center of the board as shaded and non-shaded areas. By right-clicking on a resource, you can view basic details like skills and roles. The picture displayed comes from the resource type. As an example, this resource is our field technician user. If we go to the bookable resource record, then to the related user record, we can edit the picture there. Back on the schedule board, in the side pane, you can filter resources shown based on many of the attributes that we added. We can choose to only show resources in a specific territory, or resources with a specific role category, or even both. You also have the option to choose specific resources. Choose Select Resources and add the exact resources you want to add to your board. In this example, we will add all the resources we just created. Simply select them and move them to the right and select Apply. However you add resources to the board, you can save them by choosing Options, then save current filters as default. Moving along, on the map view, you can see your resources and work orders. If we select the field technician user resource, we can see his or her starting location. If we choose the downtown shop facility resource, we can see the starting location is the same as the Seattle organizational unit. Once the resources are on the board, you can assign them work orders. 
One example is selecting a map pin and dragging it to a resource. In addition, here is the installation crew we created, and the schedule board says it has three members. We can right click and view the crew in split view. This will show all members, and you can simply schedule a work order to the crew, and it will book all members automatically.